stalking in water, dangerous fishing, holding off an attack of an aggressive predator, rope, crawling over hungry reptiles, and much more. In this episode, you'll see the most unusual, frightening, and creepy moments with crocodiles you'd better not watch alone. The episode's going to be creepy, and to get in the mood for the right vibe, let's start with something really dreadful, like this. Personally, this video reminded me of a fragment from some horror movie, except that everything happens for real. This crocodile was very determined. I'm sure he was waiting for at least the slightest excuse to attack a man, but luckily it didn't come to that. This man's lucky it happened the way it did. Crocodiles don't always just sit still. They can attack. It's especially creepy when it happens in the water, like in this footage. The quality of the video is poor, but we can clearly see the pursuit. The man's trying hard to get to land, where he'll have an advantage, and fortunately, he succeeds. As soon as the crocodile saw this, it immediately turned around. On land, these toothed animals are quite fast, but far from being as fast and dangerous as in the water. Most likely, the encounter was accidental. It's unlikely that the man would have gotten into the water on purpose to compete with a predator in swimming, right? He just happened to be in an unfortunate place, like the people in this shot I found on the internet. Their car got stuck, and the crocodile decided to take advantage of it. Do you think they managed to escape it? Write in the comments. Personally, I hope the guys were saved because a crocodile is a scary animal in every sense of the word. Crocodiles have incredibly tough skin that's almost impossible to penetrate, sharp teeth, and most importantly, powerful jaws. They have the strongest bite of any land animal, but that's not all. They add a deadly spin to their bite. Look at the way it looks. Even with a chunk of ribs and meat, it looks frightening. Watch the crocodile furiously tearing chunks off this large delicacy. Toward the end, it rips a piece of rib meat to shreds and takes a bite out of it. This is why crocodiles use lethal rotation. They hold the victim with their teeth and rotate around its axis. So crocodiles disorient the victim and tear off its flesh or limbs. Crocodiles may do this to a victim that's still alive or breathless to make it easier to eat. Knowing this ability of crocodiles, I would stay as far away from them as possible. It's generally best to stay away from them, and certainly not do this kind of thing. The girl decided to perform a deadly act by climbing a rope over a river swarming with hungry crocodiles. I hope she's a professional, or the fall to those teeth would be fatal. And this is even more fatal. The guy doesn't crawl but walks on a rope over a body of water with crocodiles and performs various tricks, dances, and so on. It seems that he's very confident in his abilities and nothing terrible will happen. But suddenly, he falls. It certainly wasn't planned, it's not part of the show. He swims to shore in a hurry and he manages to be pulled out in time. He's a goner. I wonder if he was still doing stunts like that after that. In general, I don't understand such people who consciously take huge risks. Someone crawls or walks on a rope over hungry reptiles and someone makes a bungee jump right over the river with these toothed animals person jumps, reaches the bottom, and touches the water with his hands. Crocodile reacts immediately. It's good that the bungee pulled the man up immediately. Even an extra half a second could have caused a serious injury. Fortunately, the bungee didn't break. It could have happened. And this is the ultimate extreme. No strings, no ropes, no bungee cords, direct contact with a crocodile right in its habitat. As for me, these shots are even scarier than those where the divers swim with sharks. Apparently, these guys were very confident in their abilities and in the crocodile itself. These reptiles are ruthless and don't forgive anyone. This, by the way, was an American crocodile. Its main feature is that it, like the legendary saltwater crocodile, is able to be in saltwater. That's why in Latin America, where it's widespread, residents should be wary of the seas and oceans, also because of this reptile. In addition, American crocodiles attack people in this region more often than sharks, and in general, they are known for their aggression. And yet, the extreme sports lovers you saw are exceptions to the rule. In general, people are very afraid of crocodiles, and at the moment of meeting them behave like this. Here, a Nile crocodile attacked people while they were rafting down a river in Uganda. You can see that the big guy is very determined. People fiercely fought him off with oars, and only in a few approaches they managed to drive the monster away. Yes, from the outside it looks quite tough, but otherwise there's no other way. 
And to all appearances, the crocodile didn't deliver any serious blows, but just got scared. It's basically dangerous in African rivers. Personally, I wouldn't raft there. And I certainly wouldn't go knee-deep into them to fish, as the author of this video did. The guy was fishing, but he attracted a Nile crocodile. The crocodile didn't just swim up to him, but caught hold of his leg. A struggle ensued, and we could see the crocodile itself. Fortunately, it was small. The guy was able to pull it away from his leg and block its jaws, and then save himself. The crocodile didn't do any damage to him. By the way, it was a very good tactic. The thing is that crocodiles really bite very hard. The muscles that clench their jaw are very powerful, but the muscles that open the jaw are very weak. Therefore, any crocodile, even a large one, can be neutralized by squeezing its mouth. However, this doesn't cancel the fact that the reptile will continue to lash out and kick. It seems that this Rottweiler learned about this weakness of crocodiles. He decided to check things out for himself. The brave and courageous dog got bored of just spending time with his owner and rushed toward the crocodile. I don't know about you, but I was scared for the dog. What's going to happen now? Would the crocodile eat him? Fortunately, we're not going to see that happen. Either the dog realized it quickly or he just responded to his master's voice, but he managed to get out before the crocodile grabbed him. And this big guy was discovered in Australia. It's that saltwater crocodile, the largest of crocodiles the largest of land predators, and the owner of one of the strongest bites on the planet. It's incredible how much creepiness can be concentrated in just one animal. Crocodile realizes its power and takes advantage of it. It stopped the next tourists who were floating on his river and demanded payment in the form of a piece of meat. There's no way to negotiate with such a big guy, so people had to feed it to let them go. It's one thing to encounter a crocodile in a river in its native habitat where it has every right to reign. It's quite another to come across a crocodile outside your home. Check out the creepiness. Crocodile was hiding in a drain under the video author's house. This is another piece that reminded me of a horror movie. These glow-in-the-dark eyes could easily be the cause of a nightmare. I'd rather see Pennywise from IT in the drain than something like this. By the way, in fact, it was not a crocodile, but an alligator. These creatures are very similar, they're related, but still they're different and can be distinguished. How exactly? In what ways do these differences manifest themselves? How to stop getting confused? I'll tell you. In fact, alligators can be called crocodiles, but only technically. Both alligators and crocodiles belong to the genus Crocodilians. Nevertheless, it's better to call some crocodiles and other alligators, or it's more correct. Crocodiles and alligators differ, first of all, in appearance. This is best understood by the muzzle. In crocodiles, it's a sharp, V-shaped, and in alligators, blunt and U-shaped. You can also tell them apart by their teeth. When crocodiles have closed jaws, you can see the large four tooth in the lower jaw. In alligators, the upper jaw covers these teeth. There's also a difference in color. Alligators are much darker than crocodiles. Basically, their skin is dark gray. Crocodiles, on the other hand, are lighter in color, green and olive. In addition, alligators have black spots around the jaw. They serve as a substitute for the missing sense of smell. In crocodiles, these sensors are located on the back. Size also plays a big role. We cannot call alligators small creatures, but still, they're usually much smaller than crocodiles. If those can grow up to 20 to 23 feet in length and weigh up to 1.5 to 2 tons, alligators rarely weigh more than 1 ton. There are, of course, record-breaking individuals who are quite fit to become crocodiles, but this is an exception to the rule. They also have different habitats. Alligators are only two species, American and Chinese, respectively. They can be seen only in China and America. Crocodiles, on the other hand, are distributed almost everywhere from Africa, Asia, and Australia to the Americas. In addition, crocodiles can live in salt water, for example, salt water and American crocodiles, but alligators only want fresh water. Finally, they differ in terms of aggressiveness. Alligators are not peaceful creatures, that's for sure. However, they attack people less often than crocodiles, although it does happen. Most likely, this is due to the fact that these same American alligators live in urbanized areas. For example, there are plenty of them in Florida. In this state, it's as easy to come across an alligator as in Alaska on a grizzly bear or in Australia on a spider. 
Crocodiles, on the other hand, mostly live in wilderness areas where there are either no people at all or they live in small communities. Crocodiles are less used to humans and are larger and more voracious, hence the more frequent attacks. Still, alligators are not the nicest creatures either, and there are quite a few creepy and unusual moments with them. Let's take a look at them now. Alligators do not bite as hard as crocodiles, but still the strength of their jaws is enough to put on a real show, like with a watermelon. Watch an alligator gnaw a watermelon in just one bite. Can you imagine how strong their jaws must be for something like this? By the way, don't think that alligators are inferior to crocodiles in their strength of their bite. Yes, saltwater crocodiles bite much harder, but all other crocodiles are far behind. Only the saltwater crocodile, white shark, and orca bite harder than alligators, so you definitely shouldn't mess with these toothed animals. And certainly you are not to play all sorts of dangerous games with alligators. Here we see the daredevil again. Today we've already seen people crawling over a rope over crocodiles, bungee jumping to them, and so on. Now there's something like swinging over alligators. But the swing fails, and the man ends up right in the predator's den. Fortunately, he got out instantly and survived. He wasn't even injured, as he later told me himself. However, alligators visit us more often than we visit them, not the other way around. This is the picture you can see while rafting on American rivers. Alligators swam up to the author of the video with obviously not good intentions. Soon it attacks. He almost got to the camera and almost climbed into the boat itself. It's good that the man had a great reaction and the alligator didn't continue the attack. Probably it was a warning to the man not to dare to swim there again. What scares me most about alligators and crocodiles is not even so much their size, powerful jaws, and so on. What scares me is how abruptly their moods can change. One second, these predators can just lie quietly, resting and not showing aggression, and the next sharply pounce. See for yourself. An alligator's just lying there and seems to be not going to hurt or harm anyone. But suddenly it breaks out of its seat and attacks the boat with tourists. It happened in less than a second. And now the alligator, who was just sleeping peacefully, is already in the boat. The animal wanted to attack the people so badly that it even got stuck between the railing. Fortunately, he was able to get out on his own. And here's another predator which is already waiting for guests in its reservoir. Tourists swim close to it to have a good look and get a portion of unforgettable emotions. The alligator senses this and decides to put on a show. He jumps on the boat and scares everyone. I think at that moment everyone thought that the predator was going to eat everyone, but it just wanted to get in the water on the boat. Personally, I wouldn't even float through alligator habitat in a boat, let alone a kayak. As far as I'm concerned, it's the most unreliable transportation at all, especially if you're swimming in rivers teeming with alligators. The predator saw the kayakers and took off sharply to attack them. What's even scarier is that the alligator disappeared into the water, and it's unclear where it was. Either the predator stayed near the thicket, or it was getting closer and closer to the kayakers with each passing second. In any case, they were lucky. Alligators don't like it when someone trespasses on their property. They can easily drive away uninvited guests. For example, here a man was fishing and didn't seem to be bothering anyone except for an alligator that suddenly jumped out and ran at him. Check out that speed. The alligator could very well have caught up to the man but decided to spare him. Even one alligator is a fearsome force, but what do you say about this one? Look how many alligators there are. I think there's more than a hundred of them here. Yeah, they're not very big, but who cares when there's an army of them? It's like this is the place where they hibernate. In short, it's hell for those who are afraid of reptiles. And this is hell number two, and it's even worse. Those alligators were at least mostly on land, where man has an advantage. Here, however, a man floats a boat through a cluster of these creepy creatures. The boat's not high and alligators are just dark. They can jump out at any moment and attack a man or even sink his boat. And the author of the video could accidentally fall out of the boat. But the video's in front of us, which means the man's doing fine. In general, I'm always amazed by such brave people who are not afraid to swim among alligators. Some go even further and literally plunge into the danger. It looks like this. Being right under an alligator is something new, a whole new level of extreme. 
I wonder if this daredevil wanted to poke the alligator from below or tickle it. I don't think the predator would have done anything to him. Why am I so sure of that? Because alligators apparently respect the bold and brave. This applies not only to humans, but also cats. There was an unexpected and unusual encounter between the alligator and the cat. The alligator decided to scare the cat, but the cat only backed away a little and then tried to hit the giant with his paw. The alligator realized he'd messed with the wrong opponent and obediently left. Let's start with the crocodile, which just over a decade ago was almost the main threat to an entire country. I'm talking about Lo Long. It's a saltwater crocodile, which means it's dangerous by default, but Lo Long was a unique crocodile. His length exceeded 20 feet and he weighed more than a ton. That's more than the common crocodiles of his species. Everyone in the Philippines knew about him, but the crocodile was particularly creepy for one village. Lo Long regularly made forays, attacking domestic farm animals and wild animals, and unconfirmed reports say he attacked humans as well, with several of these attacks ending tragically. The giant posed an incredible danger, so they decided to eliminate him. But to do this was very difficult. A whole operation was launched to catch the crocodile, who kept the locals in fear, and only after a few weeks people managed to catch Lo Long. It was incredibly hard to do it. It took the efforts of about a hundred people and a whole night of a long fight to get Lo Long out of the water. After that, the men tied him up, but the predator didn't give up until the very end. The crocodile broke the steel cables with a tensile strength of 6 to 12 tons four times and barely escaped. But fortunately for the Filipinos, he failed to break free. The dangerous crocodile was sent to confinement, and until the end of his life in 2013, he lived in a crocodile center. There he was also recognized as the world's largest crocodile in captivity at the time. It happens that crocodiles keep a village or a city in fear, but sometimes they keep an entire island in fear. This is the case of Ramri Island in Myanmar, formerly called Burma. Many people wouldn't have gone there on their own free will, but there was no way out. When it happened, World War II was going on, and there was a battle between Britain and the Japanese Empire on Ramri Island. The British were winning, and the Japanese troops decided to retreat across the island swamps. In the end, they didn't die by the bullets of their enemies, but accepted an even worse fate. The swamps of Ramri Island at the time were literally teeming with saltwater crocodiles, and the predators didn't like that the soldiers invaded their possessions. I think you understand what happened next. According to one British soldier's recollection, out of over 1,000 Japanese soldiers on the island, the British captured only 20 in shock. More than 1,200 Japanese met their fates in the jaws of the planet's largest land predators, and the incident even made it into the Guinness Book of the Greatest Disasters Suffered by Humans from Animals. And by the way, don't think that crocodiles left the swamps after the war. To this day, Ramri Island remains an incredibly dangerous place that's best not to visit. Perhaps only one crocodile in history has been able to surpass both the reptiles of Ramri and the huge Lo Long. It's Gustav. This is the case when just one animal keeps in fear not just a village, a town, or an island, but an entire country. And that's not an exaggeration. If you're in the African country of Burundi, ask the locals and they'll confirm my words. Only if you do find yourself in Burundi, be as careful as possible when near the rivers. Gustav is still alive and still an incredible threat. The Nile crocodile has grown very large, causing it to change his diet and eat slightly different things than crocodiles usually eat. For example, he often attacks hippos and buffaloes to specifically gobble them up. And he also attacks humans very often, whom he has long been addicted to. Statistics are shocking and frightening and gives me the creeps. According to some reports, this reptile has killed several thousand people in his lifetime. You may ask, why hasn't such a dangerous crocodile been caught and eliminated yet? Because it's literally impossible. You can be close to Gustav with a gun, nets, cables, and even explosives, but he can still escape death. The locals have tried very many times to put an end to this monster, but have failed every time. If they tried to catch him, he would turn on super speed mode and instantly evade pursuit. If he was shot, the bullets simply didn't kill him. The giant has abnormally thick skin, like armor. They even tried to blow him up with dynamite, but Gustav was only slightly stunned and injured, but nothing more. 
The locals are so afraid of Gustav that the crocodile has acquired a status close to mythical in Burundi, and they even make feature films about the crocodile. Crocodiles are extremely dangerous animals, but they are not the only ones that can keep large areas and populations in fear. History knows other such cases. Keep watching to learn about a killer bear, the most dangerous tigress, and an unusual creature that still remains a mystery. Sankabetsu Bear In fact, bears are not as dangerous animals as people say they are. They don't attack people that often, but if they do, the chances of survival are slim. And the most dangerous bears are the ones that want revenge. That's exactly what the predator I am about to tell you about was. It all happened in 1915 in rural Hokkaido in the village of Sankabetsu. A brown bear had come out of hibernation very early and was looking for something to eat. It came to the village and ate corn which eventually began to annoy the villagers. They tried to finish it off, but only wounded it with a gun. The Japanese thought that the bear had taken the hint and wouldn't come again, but they were dead wrong, literally. It came to take revenge, and its revenge was terrible. For a whole month, the bear laid siege to the village of Sankabetsu and the adjoining farm. The 10-foot-tall, 880-pound giant gave no rest to anyone and kept everyone in a frenzy of fear. Unfortunately, it took the lives of several peasants during such a siege. In the end, police and hunters from neighboring countries arrived in the village and managed to neutralize the bear. But it managed to do a lot of damage. The Sankabetsu bear is still well remembered in Japan. The Beast of Gavaudan This next case is special because it is not completely clear what animal kept people in fear in the first place. It's been a long time, but scientists still haven't identified the criminal animal, well, or rather its species. But first things first. It happened in the 1760s in France, in the province of Gavaudan. For several years, a beast hunted everybody. They called it the Beast of Gavaudan. Why is it so depersonalized? Because no one understood what kind of creature it was. Some described it as a large dog. Someone described it as a ferocious wolf. Someone believed that it was a mutant hyena, and someone even thought that a real werewolf was in France. Anything could be possible. I'm not even ruling out the werewolf version. Besides, the Beast of Gavaudan was particularly cruel and ruthless, just like werewolves from sci-fi movies. In three years, the Beast had attacked about 250 people, and no one could do anything about it. The French were beginning to think that the Beast of Gavaudan was a possessed demon or a punishment from the Almighty sent for their sins. They hoped to get rid of the beast as soon as possible, and in 1767 they did. A local hunter, Jean Chastel, put an end to the suffering of the French. There were beasts that kept whole villages and islands in fear. There were beasts that kept entire countries in fear. But what about the beast that was able to keep several countries in fear at once? Surprisingly, history knows such a case. I'm talking about the Champawat Tiger. This Bengal tigress kept Nepal in fear, as well as the Kumaon Division of India, where she hunted in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It was even more dangerous than the legendary Beast of Gavaudan. In terms of statistics, only Gustav can compete with her, as at least 436 people became her victims. With just one tigress and over 400 victims, it's hard to even believe that this is real. The Champawat Tiger did her gruesome deeds in villages. There were a lot of them in those places then, and they were neighboring with wildlife, which the tigress took advantage of. Usually, the predator attacked in the daytime. She tracked people who went into the forest for firewood or to collect some food for animals, lurked in an ambush, and caught up with her victims at the most unexpected moment. They simply had no time to do anything. The predator never stayed in one place for too long. It was as if she realized that she'd made a lot of trouble and that she was being hunted, so she started changing locations every day. One day, she could be in one village, and the next day, she could already be in the one that was almost 20 miles away from the first one. This made it very difficult to find the tigress, and it confused the hunters. Meanwhile, the tigress did not just change positions, but continued to attack local farmers, taking them by surprise. Things went so far that the government and even the army had to get involved. This is one of the unique cases in history when the armed forces were involved in the fight against just one animal. But even the military couldn't save the situation. Fortunately, everything was settled by an English hunter named Jim Corbett, who was called to deal with the tigress. 
He managed to track her down with his squad of volunteers, bypass the predator's ambush, and neutralize the threat. As it later turned out, the tigress had defects that prevented her from hunting her natural prey, which is why she attacked people. The crocodile is not the only dangerous reptile. The Komodo dragon can compete with it. Now I'll show you how voracious this creature can be. Komodo dragon It's worth starting a description of this terrible predator with the fact that it's been living on Earth for quite a long time. Its remains have been found to be nearly 4 million years old. For such a long period, the Komodo dragon perfectly adapted to the environment, acquired a dangerous and menacing appearance, grew small plate-like scales on the body, and turned brown with rare spots and inclusions. The older the monitor lizard, the darker it looks. As for the size of this lizard, it is, to put it mildly, impressive. The length of the body exceeds 6.5 and, and even 10 feet, and the weight can exceed 220 pounds. Unlike most animals, Komodo dragon males are almost always larger than females. Speaking of length, the lizard's tail takes the lion's share of it. Often, it's as much as half the whole body. But don't be so quick to think that the strength of the monitor lizard is in its tail. Just because it's so big doesn't mean it's extremely strong. However, you can't call it weak either. But I'll talk about that later. Generally, they walk alone. The group is not about them. It's desirable for them only when it comes to reproduction. Well, in search of food, groups sometimes help as well. These creatures live about 50 years, and here again it's important to draw an analogy between males and females. The latter has a shorter life by as much as two times. Can you imagine it? And the saddest thing is that the lizards cannot tell about such a sad fate to the rest, even if more than one female has already died before their eyes. The fact is that these lizards don't know how to speak. They're only able to make something like a hiss because they lack vocal cords. Basically, they intimidate enemies with such signals or demonstrate irritation. Now, let's find out exactly how this monitor lizard hunts. During this responsible process, it uses everything it can. Limbs with huge and sharp claws, jaws with razor-like teeth, and even a tail are used. As you remember, its tail is big, which means that it would be at least stupid not to use it in battles. The Komodo dragon is a smart creature that does everything right. It's learned to wield its tail so much that it can even break the limbs of large artiodactyls. In this way, the monitor lizard deprives enemies of the ability to move normally and completes what it started with a calm soul. The locals, next to whom these predators are found, even have such a legend. One day, a dog crept up to the monitor lizard. The predator hit it so hard with its tail that the dog flew off in an arc and hit it right in its mouth. Decide for yourself whether it's true or not, but it sounds pretty creepy. Why do monitor lizards have such a strong tail? It's not fair, other animals living nearby say. But here, for the sake of truth, it's worth noting that the jaw of the Komodo dragon is far from indicative. The skull of the monitor lizard is light and not able to fit enough muscle mass. Hence, it follows that the bite of these predators is almost two and a half times weaker than that of crocodiles. These monitor lizards even have a different bite strategy from crocodiles. The monitor lizard has a lot of teeth, which also have a curved shape and notches characteristic of sharks. Biting and backing away, the monitor lizard tears the soft tissue of its prey, causing irreparable damage to it. It's almost impossible to cope with such an onslaught, especially when you consider the fact that the monitor lizard attacks from an ambush and the prey may not be ready for battle at all. When attacking, the predator immediately tries to knock the opponent down tearing its tendons, biting it, or hitting it with its tail. If the attack is unsuccessful, the prey is pursued. The running speed of the Komodo dragon is not the most outstanding and rarely exceeds 12 miles per hour. Nevertheless, it has a special sinus in its neck, which, like a pump, pumps oxygen into the lungs, allowing it to maintain maximum speed for a long time. In most cases, a wounded animal is not able to elude the chase for a long time, and the predator overtakes its prey. In addition, it has two glands in its lower jaw at once which produce venom. If the monitor lizard toxin is in the prey's body, the prey will have muscle paralysis, blood clotting will decrease, and blood pressure will drop. Very soon, the prey will simply lose consciousness. But not only the Komodo lizard is the creature that should be avoided, next you'll learn about other reptiles that frighten with their appearance and abilities. Matamata. -mata. 
Usually when a person hears the word turtle, they imagine someone sweet, slow, harmless, and beautiful. Some imagine cartoon characters in their heads. But now is not the time for fairy tales. The Mata Mata enters the battlefield. It can be found only in bodies of standing water, ponds, lakes with muddy bottom, or slow rivers. Although it would be more correct to say, under no circumstances visit these places. Because all such reservoirs are rich in humic acids, the Mata Mata blends in well with the dark terrain, and it's virtually impossible to see the animal. But when the time comes and a potential prey is in front of it, everyone will know about the presence of the Mata Mata. It's simply impossible not to notice this bottomless jaw. The only good news for us, and many animals, is that the jaws are not as developed. This forces the Mata Mata to rely only on sucking in its prey whole. Golden Lancehead And this is a very beautiful, but at the same time extremely venomous snake, which has many thermosensitive pits between the eyes and nostrils. Due to the fact that the Golden Lancehead lives only on the uninhabited island of Ila de Queimada Grande, located 22 miles from Brazil, there's no official evidence of human deaths from the bite of this snake although the locals tell stories about their constant attacks. Given the toxin contained in the Golden Lance Head, the chance of human death is not much, only 7%. If the antidote is obtained quickly enough, the probability of a fatal outcome will still not disappear, but it will decrease to only 3%. The ingestion of the toxin into the body is accompanied by pain, nausea, the appearance of hematomas, and subsequent hemorrhages in the brain. The venom of the golden lancehead is fast-acting and five times stronger than any toxin of other lanceheads. Gila Monster The Gila Monster from the United States and Mexico is one of the most venomous lizard species in existence. This is despite the fact that the lizard is a little over 20 inches long and weighs about 4.5 pounds. In general, this lizard is unique in its kind. Its ability to speed up or critically slow down its own metabolism is worth noting. The more food the venomous lizard digests, the faster it will fill up not only its stomach but also its tail. Yes, the excess is converted into fat and sent there. The frequency of its meals in this case is unique, no more than 10 times a year. If you think that grabbing this creature by its tail is pointless as lizards drop it, you're wrong. Would you get rid of a drawer full of stuff? Or would you empty it first and then throw it away? Here too, the Gila monster isn't going to lose provisions for a couple of months in advance in an instant. Staying on the topic of provisions, I'll tell you an interesting fact. Scientists have found out that this lizard has a special hormone in its saliva that can reduce appetite. After that, many came up with the idea to use it as the basis of weight loss drugs. Horned Lizard It's a creature that doesn't stand out for its size. It's about 4 inches long, feeds on common ants termites and other insects, gives birth to its babies in summer, and its clutch of eggs consists on average of 40 eggs. It would be logical to ask, what's wrong with it? Why would this creature be scary? Well, you haven't found out about its main ability yet. It can become Superman and start shooting from its eyes. Fortunately, it doesn't shoot lasers, but that doesn't make things any easier. Its eyes shoot nothing but its own blood, and it looks insanely creepy. The blood attack is so weird and creepy that it can drive an assailant insane. While the enemy will be deep in shock, the lizard will run away. This is all made real by the horned lizard's ability to cut off the flow of blood. The pressure in its eyes increases so much that the capillaries explode, dousing the enemy in a dense jet. Since the lizard, as you remember, feeds on ants, its blood contains an irritant concentrate. As a result, the offender will not only be greatly frightened, but also wounded. The effect of such a bloodshot for a predator can be compared to the use of pepper spray. However, bloodshots, some bites with small but sharp teeth and strong tails, pale against the inland taipan. This reptile is in no hurry to compete and show its aggression. It slithers peacefully under the scorching desert sun of Australia and doesn't want to attack anyone. After all, why rush anywhere when you're an owner of one of the most dangerous venoms in the world? The toxin that these snakes produce is 180 times more powerful than that of the king cobra. A small dose of it can kill 100 people, or 250,000 mice. At the same time, the length of the inland taipan is not too long. It usually doesn't exceed 8 feet. 
The snake has beautiful brown golden scales and a neat, polished and smooth head. Due to its fertility, the inland taipan is widely distributed in the desert and semi-desert regions of Australia. The Diet of Snakes Snakes! The way they move, their unusual jaw structure, their sharpest fangs, the large number of spinal bones – from 200 to 450 – absolutely everything about them is amazing. I think I will not be wrong if I say that snakes are also some of the most dangerous and deadly animals. What creatures can become the prey of a snake? Toads, insects, lizards, small rodents, birds. Snakes usually swallow their prey whole. Moreover, they are also capable of eating their own kind. Yeah, we have heard many times that animals can be cannibals, but have you ever heard of animals eating themselves? Sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? But it's the harsh truth. If the bites of many venomous snakes are deadly to others, how do they react to themselves? And anyways, why bite themselves and even eat themselves? These are some weird methods. Nevertheless, the phenomenon of eating own flesh even has an official name – autophagy. In addition to snakes, this phenomenon is subjected to some protozoan microorganisms – ascidians. In snakes, autophagy most occurs unconsciously and unintentionally. Why is this happening? The main explanation for self-eating of these reptiles is their complete reliance on their sense of smell for food choice. Individuals are very let down by their sense of smell, on which they rely so blindly. They lose control over themselves when they sense the scent of food. Well, that's not much of a surprise, because we too can lose our heads at the sight of food. If a mouse or rat, for example, ran along the tail end and their scent was left on the reptile's scales, the snake goes into a state of intense excitement and takes itself for food, the understanding of the fact that it's already completely lost. In such situations, the reptile's own tail is its prey. Due to its relatively small brain, the individual cannot foresee the consequences of such an event. Therefore, eating its own tail is an unintentional action. There are two possible ways an individual either gives up and spits out its tail or continues to devour its body until it's completely asphyxiated. Sometimes self-eating is a manifestation of some brain pathology. The animal may have disadaptation and discoordination in space. It sees the real prey, pounces on it but misses a little and hurts itself. And what about venom? Will the snake be hurt by it? No, it won't. Snakes are immune. It's more likely that a snake will be hurt by an injury or bleeding. Such self-immunity, by the way, applies to all snakes of the same species or even genus. For example, a viper will not die from the venom of another viper, but if it's bitten by another snake, say a black mamba, then the bite will be lethal. Here's a vivid example of self-eating. The snake clings tightly to itself. Then you can see how the man pours some liquid on its hand and runs its hand over the reptile's head and jaw, after which it abruptly releases its tail. The duration of this clip is exactly five minutes, four of which the snake is in this position. While it's good that at least it's come to its senses, it turns out that even our ancestors noticed the propensities of snakes to eat themselves. Egyptian archaeologists have found an ancient drawing of a snake or a dragon coiled up in a ring and holding its own tail in its mouth. The creature depicted in this picture is called Arabros and is on par with the most ancient symbols of mankind. The symbol of Arabros can be interpreted in different ways. The most common version is a representation of eternity and infinity. In more recent times, the Swiss psychoanalyst Carl Jung put a new meaning into the symbol of the Arabros. Thus, the orthodox analytical psychology, the Arabros archetype, symbolizes darkness and self-destruction simultaneously with fertility and creativity. Now you know why snakes eat themselves. But that's not all the creepy stuff in this episode. Stay tuned! Scary snake moments caught on camera, as well as interesting and fascinating facts about these reptiles, are further in this episode. Here, a camera mounted at the entrance caught the moment a snake bit a man in the head. Notice the man calmly opens the door in his house and a snake appears from somewhere above and immediately aims at his head in the eye area. It all happens so fast that it's impossible to realize what's happening at once. The man starts screaming loudly and runs into the house. It's like a whole new level of home security. One day, Texas resident Belinda Munez had a visitor she didn't expect to see on her doorstep. And no, unfortunately, it wasn't Santa Claus or the men in black. It was a snake. The evidence of what happened is a recording from a street video camera. It turned out that a snake, which managed to climb the wall, rang the doorbell. The footage shows the reptile crawling up to the bell and pressing it with its head. It's 
good time to ask, how do you feel about snakes? Have you fallen in love with them yet while watching this video? Well, if these cold-blooded creatures are not among your favorites after all, then stay away from this place. And if you're not indifferent to them, know that in the Canadian province of Manitoba, near the village of Narcisse, there's an infestation of garter snakes every spring. The prairies of Manitoba become a real sea of nightmarish, wriggling snakes at this time. In winter, the snakes hibernate in underground caves formed by water leaching into the limestone rocks. But soon after the snow melts, in late April or early May, tens of thousands of garter snakes emerge from the caves and begin wriggling to the surface, performing their mating rituals in large, tangled balls. Once, a zoology professor at Oregon State University estimated that there were about 35,000 snakes in one hole. There could be over 250,000 snakes in the whole area. If what happens every spring in Canada is natural, the annual event taking place in the United States is not. It's the so-called snake rodeo, a popular entertainment and sport in the southern United States, mostly in Texas. It all starts with a general hunt for wild rattlesnakes. Thousands of captured individuals are taken to the rodeo venue and stacked in special enclosures. Many of the snakes that end up below soon die under the weight of their congeners. The survivors are used in various games. At the end of the rodeo, the remaining snakes are exposed, cooked, or even simply slaughtered. It's an event where you can also buy snake skin and even buy a rattlesnake you like as a gift. Curiously enough, the event attacks tens of thousands of visitors each year. Rivals of Snakes Now, let's talk a little bit about the life of these reptiles. All snakes, without exception, lead a predatory lifestyle. Apparently, there are no vegetarians among them at all. I've already mentioned that snakes mainly feed off small animals and swiftly attack their prey, but is there any animal that can attack the snake itself? This undersized beast, you might say, is obsessed with snakes, even venomous ones. Yeah, it's a hedgehog. Hedgehogs can eat venomous snakes without any consequences. Yes, it's quite a peaceful animal that eats caterpillars, worms, or frogs, but it can also fight back against such predators. More often than not, hedgehogs have fights with vipers. In any case, when encountering a snake, hedgehogs will not pass up, but on the contrary will demonstrate their strengths. First, an excellent armor in the form of thorns on the back, and second, if we take the specific case of vipers, these prickly creatures are not afraid of these venomous reptiles at all. Hedgehogs have a resistance to snake venom, and they're protected from its effects by the protein called arenacin. In addition to hedgehogs, there are other contenders for the title of animals that are not afraid of snakes. For example, the honey badger, also known as a ratel. In addition to honey, from which the name comes, their diet may include snakes. I'll even say more, snakes make up more than half the honey badger's diet. Immunity to venoms is paramount to its survival. They hunt all kinds of snakes, including the most venomous, and can even be bitten, that is, envenomed in the process. Although snakes with strong venom can bite a honey badger more than once, the honey badger is able to kill the reptiles with ease and stay alive. The venom does it almost no harm. Later, I'll tell you about the biggest snakes in the world. Let's start with one rather interesting shot that was sent to me by a subscriber. He states that this shot was captured in Brazil this year. Allegedly, local archaeologists accidentally stumbled upon an ancient cave in which there were still fresh bones and some dead creatures. Fearing for their lives, they passed the information to the authorities, and they in turn arrived to investigate the case. It turned out that this decision was completely correct, because this cave was home to a record-breaking giant snake. Its length exceeded 33 feet, but personally, I was most surprised by the width of this creature. Of course, the authorities forbade disseminating this information in any way, but some footage, including this one, still leaked on the internet. Anaconda The anaconda is a species of snake from the boas family, which is the most massive in the modern fauna. In history, there's a lot of evidence of individuals longer than 33 feet, but all this is at the level of unconfirmed rumors. Someone saw something somewhere, but never filmed, lost the camera, and so on. However, this video is undeniable proof that there are still fearless divers in the world. How else to explain the behavior of this daredevil, ready to go underwater and shoot a giant and at the same time dangerous snake from arm's length? To my surprise, this river giant showed no aggression towards the man at all. 
it was as if it liked to show off in front of the camera and thought, go ahead, film me, and then tell your friends so that everyone will be afraid to come here. And it's true, there's a lot to be afraid of. These snakes have strongly developed muscles because the strength of the muscles depends on the successful outcome of the hunt. Many believe, based on myths, that the snake is able to hypnotize a person. In fact, these are only myths that have no confirmation. However, if the snake is longer than 10 feet, then a person is unlikely to cope with it in any case, under hypnosis or without. The only good news is that anacondas are not particularly interested in us. They prefer to feed on mammals, birds and reptiles based on their personal capabilities, which directly depend on their own size. Diving in Brazil has not shown this, but in fact anacondas do have natural enemies in the water. These primarily include alligators. Therefore, each anaconda that survives to have a large size is able to do many things, from camouflage to excellent strangulation techniques. Reticulated Python But after all, not all snakes are dangerous and bloodthirsty, even if they are big, don't you believe me? Then just take a look at this tame cutie which obeys the owner and does not give the impression of an aggressive predator. To all those who think so, I can tell you this, this is a lie. The snake in front of you is indeed tame, but this is more of an exception to the rule rather than a real reflection of the truth. The reticulated python you just saw is, although not venomous, one of the largest snakes in the world. It's the longest snake in the world's fauna. The largest individuals can grow up to 23 feet in length and more. Moreover, despite the outstanding size, this python is very difficult to find in the wild, all thanks to its marvelous camouflage skills, literally making it invisible. Even though in terrariums and on photos, the chain of diamond-shaped spots and looks too sharp and deliberate, in the colorful jungle you'll find the snake only when it wishes to do so. Besides, the snake moves silently through the jungle. Branches will not crunch under its feet because snakes have no legs. Speaking of detection, I said for a reason that a python can't be found unless it wants to. The thing is that it has special heat-sensitive dimples, thanks to which it sees the environment just like through a thermal screen. Thus, the python is like playing Pac-Man, crawling through the jungle, avoiding dangers, and eating, 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 constantly increasing in size. When reticulated pythons reach several meters in length, they move to a new level and begin to conquer the aquatic environment. Crocodiles and other snakes become their rivals. But not only the reticulated python can brag to others, its relative, the Central African Rock Python, crawls onto the pedestal of cool animals. This is a very large, non-venomous snake, which is part of the giant four. The length of its body can exceed 20 feet, and its weight reaches almost 220 pounds. At the same time, the body of the python retains its slenderness, even despite the fact that it eats literally everything that gets in its way. Antelopes, six and a half foot long crocodiles, warthogs, everybody can become its dinner. Camouflage color helps the Central African rock python remain inconspicuous and attack the prey with just one leap, wrap itself around it and no longer let it anywhere. No one has ever managed to escape from these deadly hugs. By the way, for some reason, many people think that during the hugging, the preys become difficult to breathe. It's like they lack oxygen, but it's not like that at all. In this case, the Central African rock python squeezes the blood vessels. The snake squeezes the body with such force that the blood can no longer run through the veins and the prey simply pass out after a minute. So no breath holding will help. When the prey passes out, the python swallows it at once and does not choke. And if the opponent miraculously wakes up, which of course is unlikely, nature has endowed the Central African rock python with sharpened fangs as thick as a pinky finger. Such sharpening will quickly and efficiently send even the most tenacious fighter for survival to the grave. King Cobra Size is not the only indicator that's responsible for the strength, independence, and danger of animals. There are many other factors, one of which is toxin. According to it, the king cobra is unequivocally ahead of our previous snakes, because they were even non-venomous, and the cobra is the largest venomous snake in the world. But do not confuse it with the most venomous land snake. 
such as the Inland Taipan, which Venom is 180 times more powerful than that of the Cobra. But that's another story. Some King Cobras can reach a length of 18 and a half feet. It lives for more than 30 years and grows throughout its life. Some of you are probably thinking right now that since there's something with a toxin 180 times more powerful, the King Cobra's venom isn't dangerous at all. But that's absolutely not the case. The venom of the snake is neurotoxic and causes respiratory arrest when it enters the bloodstream. Unfortunately, or fortunately, there are not many King Cobras, and I think I know why. The fact is that part of their diet is made up of their own congeners. It's for eating their own kind that King Cobras have grown to such a large size. Black Mamba This snake got its name due to the black color of the inner cavity of the mouth, similar to ink. The length of this snake can exceed 10 feet, which makes it the second largest among venomous snakes right behind the King Cobra. It's also one of the fastest snakes in the world, reaching speeds of over 7 miles per hour in short distances. Simply put, it is such a skittish, creeping creature, which is also extremely aggressive. If it doesn't like someone, it'll deal with it shortly and immediately make a confident lunge. With one bite, the Black Mamba injects up to 400 milligrams of venom. It seems not so terrible value, but if you consider that the lethal dose for an adult is 10 to 15 milligrams, it becomes really creepy. If an antidote is not administered immediately, the chance of death is not 50, 70, or even 90 percent. It will be exactly 100 percent. Therefore, I would not advise anyone to get close to Black Mambas, no matter how interesting it is to watch them. Among other things, you can distinguish these snakes from the rest by one interesting feature. During the walk, they constantly hold their head high, so they've been taught from childhood. They do this not from excessive pride or confidence, but in order to make it easier to look for prey. When the future prey is found, the Black Mamba raises its head even higher, almost a meter above the ground. In this way, the venomous monster warns about the impending attack. Bushmaster this snake usually doesn't exceed 10 feet in length and weighs no more than 11 pounds. But this is enough for it to remain the largest representative of venomous snakes of South America from the Vipers family. Among other things, this species is rare also because many people give to Bushmasters the title of the most patient snakes in the world. Where do you think they've all gone? Maybe they're sleeping? Or eating someone in a secluded corner? No, they're not. Chances are, right now, thousands of Bushmasters around the world are on standby. Whenever they stick out their tongue, they pick up odors from the air, leaves, and soil. The tongue transmits this chemical information to sensory organs located on the snake's head. The brain processes this odor, and the snake picks up the trail. It realizes where and how long ago this or that animal ran, finds a quieter place, and gets comfortable. The wait for prey can last up to several weeks, which is why the Bushmaster's hunts are almost always successful. San Lucia Racer You can find quite a few black mambas or king cobras all over the world. The world is full of all kinds of boa constrictors and pythons, but the San Lucia Racer is extremely rare. So much so, in fact, they're considered the rarest snakes on the planet. In the wild, there are less than 20 individuals. The name suggests that these snakes are found in San Lucia, an island state located in the Caribbean Sea. These reptiles live in the forests and bushes at an altitude of about one kilometer above sea level. These San Lucia racers are not very large. They reach a length of just over 120 centimeters. The coloration is variable. Some individuals have a broad brown stripe running along the upper part of the body, while other individuals have a brown stripe alternating with yellow spots. These rare reptiles feed on small rodents, lizards, and frogs. At this point, scientists are interested in finding the best way to conserve the San Lucia racers. They are making various attempts to conserve the species and are trying different techniques, but so far they've had little success. It's to be hoped that they'll succeed in preserving this interesting species. Do you remember the dodo birds? They lived peacefully in Mauritius until the Dutch sailors arrived there, and in just a few decades the population was completely wiped out as a result of which the bird was declared extinct. As practice shows, Mauritius is not the best place for many animals in general. 
For example, the round island boa, which used to inhabit Mauritius, became completely extinct there due to predation by rats that came to the islands with the travelers. It's now common on Round Island, north of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. At the moment, this boa is one of the rarest reptiles in the entire world, but fortunately it's not as bad as it could be. Well, back in the 1980s, the population was barely 100 individuals. Now, thanks to efforts to protect the species, it's increased to about 1,000. Clearing Round Island of rabbits and ghosts and planting of endemic vegetation has done its job. It's quite possible that soon this snake will not be so rare. Madagascar Blind Snake There are also problems in neighboring Madagascar. For example, there's the Madagascar Blind Snake, which is now in a very difficult situation. Yes, it really is a snake, although it looks more like a worm, but only if worms are a dime a dozen. It's very hard to find the snake. The unique snake with a length of about 25 centimeters was discovered in 1905. For more than 100 years, it remained known to biologists only by a single individual. New data on the snake was only obtained in the 21st century. The Madagascar blind snake lives on a small piece of land in the northeast of the country. Despite its harmless appearance and blindness, this reptile is a predator. It hunts ants and termites in the sand. It's possible that ants and termites will soon be able to breathe easy. Every year there are fewer and fewer of these snakes, and the reason for that is human activity. Unfortunately, humans are responsible for the extermination and extinction of many animals. Among them, there's one of the most amazing and rare turtles on the planet, which boasts a beautiful mohawk on its head. Stay tuned to see this endangered turtle as well as other world's rarest reptiles that will amaze you. Matagua Valley Beaded Lizard If you go to Guatemala, you might encounter the Matagua Valley Beaded Lizard, but you'll be incredibly lucky if you manage to do so because this animal is considered the rarest lizard in the world at the moment. It's directly threatened with extinction. Now there are less than 200 individuals of this species on the planet. The lizard is found only in one place on the planet, in the Matagua Valley in Guatemala. For this reason, it got its name. The species was first discovered only in the 1980s, but locals have known this lizard for quite some time. After observing the Matagua Valley beaded lizard, scientists came to the conclusion that its main food is bird eggs. This reptile also feeds on beetles and crickets. Gharial One of the rarest crocodiles on the planet is the gharial. It's the only modern species in the Gavalis genus. It inhabits the territory of Hindustan. By the way, the name gharial literally means crocodile in Hindi. In general, the locals didn't spend much time creating the name for the toothy creature. At the moment, the gharial is in danger of extinction. According to estimates in 2017, the world population of this species counts no more than 900 individuals, which means that now the situation may be even worse. Unfortunately, human activity is the cause of the situation. Since the last century, people have been actively reducing the habitats suitable for gharials, catching too many fish, which gharials feed on, and also exterminating these crocodiles for medical purposes. Males, for example, were often hunted for the outgrowth on their nose, which are considered aphrodisiacs. It's a shame that this is the way things turned out. After all, unlike most crocodiles, the gharial is not dangerous. According to local residents, which is confirmed by scientists, these reptiles pose no threat. Plus, they look very unusual. Not every crocodile's jaw looks like a saw or razor. It would be a pity if these reptiles went extinct. Cantor's Giant Softshell Turtle The Cantor's Giant Softshell Turtle, also called the Asian Giant Softshell Turtle, is one of the largest softshell turtles and freshwater turtles in general. It can be as long as 2 meters and weigh up to 50 kilograms. The Cantor's Giant Softshell Turtle is not only one of the largest but also one of the rarest turtles on the entire planet. Until recently, it was even considered an extinct species. After the turtle was last seen in Cambodia in 2013, scientists declared it extinct. But four years later, thanks to an examination of an area on the Mekong River in Cambodia, scientists found turtles along a short stretch of the river which was 48 kilometers long. First, a clutch of eggs was found, and then an adult female weighing 11 kilograms was found. It's not known exactly what became of its offspring, but it's likely that the turtles hatched. Either way, one clutch is clearly not enough to quickly restore the population, so it's possible that scientists will soon again recognize the Cantor's giant softshell turtle as an extinct species, this time definitively and irrevocably. <laughs> Mary River Turtle 
Another rare creature with a shell is the Mary River Turtle. It's so named because the species lives in the Mary River, which runs through southeastern Queensland, Australia. This reptile is a prime example of how quickly things can change. Fifty to sixty years ago, these turtles were a big hit with pet stores, selling upwards of 15,000 individuals a year. This turtle looks cool, not every turtle has such a cool green mohawk on its head. Unfortunately, these turtles can no longer be found in pet stores. Breeding them as pets is out of the question at the moment. Scientists are trying their best to preserve the species. Scientists believe that these reptiles are among those that have most threatened with extinction. According to one of the versions, the reason for the sharp decrease in the population was the increased demand for these turtles as pets. Madagascan Big-Headed Turtle Next up, another turtle, which also doesn't boast a large population. The Madagascan Big-Headed Turtle is endemic to Madagascar. It lives in the rivers and lakes of this country. Unlike the Cantor's giant softshell turtle, the Madagascan Big-Headed Turtle is not large, but at the same time it's not small. It reaches a length of about 50 centimeters and weighs 15 kilograms. These reptiles feed on amphibians, mollusks, and arthropods. Unfortunately, people are actively destroying the habitats of these turtles, eating these reptiles and taking them off the island to use them in traditional medicine in China and Southeast Asian countries. For this reason, there are fewer and fewer Madagascan big-headed turtles left each year. Now these reptiles are so rare that scientists consider them one of the most endangered species among all animals on the planet. Pinta Island Tortoise some reptiles are simply considered rare and some even got listed in the Guinness Book of World Records due to their rarity. Under the rarest reptile in the world, the Guinness Book lists the Pinta Island tortoise, or more specifically, one individual named Lonesome George. The Pinta Island tortoise is a species of land turtle from Pinta Island in the Galapagos Islands. During the 19th and 20th centuries, the tortoises of this species were almost completely wiped out. Only Lonesome George remained, which became a very valuable discovery for scientists. Having found George, scientists began to carefully protect it as well as try to obtain offspring from it. To this end, two females were brought to Lonesome George's home from the island of Española, which were genetically closest to the Pinta Island tortoises. But attempts failed and Lonesome George passed away in 2012 at more than 100 years old. After his death, many scientists recognized the Pinta Island tortoise as an extinct species, but recently there was a hope. In 2020, an expedition discovered a young female hybrid turtle on Isabella Island, which DNA was as similar as possible to that of the Pinta Island tortoise. As it turned out, the female is a direct descendant of an unknown purebred of the species. Who knows? Perhaps thanks to it, scientists will be able to recover the species. As for now, this very female can be called the rarest reptile on the planet. Let's also take a look at the most dangerous reptiles, crocodiles. What are these giants capable of? Obstacle Course After a long feast, the crocodiles finally returned to their native territory and decided to get some sleep to catch their breath. However, no matter whether this predator is hungry or not, one shouldn't trust it under any circumstances. That's the principle followed by the zebras in the following video, and they're absolutely right. Despite the fact that the crocodiles were right in their way, the striped creatures still dared to go through this obstacle course because there was simply no other way to get to their new home. One of the zebras was grabbed by the tail, and the congeners thought that was the only problem, but no one noticed how their baby zebra was hurt by the strong current of the river and swam away somewhere in the distance. The poor thing that had been grabbed by its tail managed to escape after all, and now everyone was holding their breath to the last, hoping to see their little congener again. And here, just like in epic movies, this striped creature appeared on the horizon. Look to my coming at first light on the fifth day. At dawn, look to the east. Got to the place that had just recently knocked it off the path, walked literally over the heads of the predators without the slightest bit of fear and was back in the circle of loved ones. That's what I call the will to live and the willpower that even crocodiles can't interfere with. It seems to me that heroic escapes like the one in the previous video go viral not only on the internet among humans but also with the help of word of mouth in the animal world. 
The Impala, caught on camera in the following video, remembered the success of that young zebra and, realizing it was in a stalemate situation, made one last desperate decision. It jumped into the water as hard as it could and tried to swim away from the crocodile. As you can understand, this even sounds silly and too presumptuous. The toothy predator swims every day. This is its native habitat, in which it can easily catch up with anyone. The outcome was obvious. The crocodile overtook the impala and started to fight with it underwater, depriving the horned animal of its ability to breathe. The outcome of the battle was obvious, but there is still something in the story that I didn't fully understand. As the crocodile was chasing the impala, the hippo headed toward them. What do you think it wanted? Was it trying to save the impala or did it also intend to eat it? Share your thoughts in the comments. Otters versus Crocodile Such a striking headline was seen by everyone in the northeast Singapore area a few years ago. A clash between six otters and a crocodile was caught on camera in their nature reserve. A group of otters decided to show their aggressive and bullying features and attacked the toothy giant. But there was one thing. The reptile had battle wounds, because of which it wasn't up to such unequal battles at all. The crocodile was missing a tail. By the way, it had lost it on the same place several years earlier doing a battle with its congener. Despite the obvious superiority of the opponent, the crocodile took the battle and showed its best side but still its mind prevailed and ordered the predator to get out. Its physical condition, as well as the numerical superiority of the otters, reduced the chances of victory to zero. You have to admit that getting away was a very good and deliberate decision. I remembered you. The harnessed bushbuck is a species of antelope that lives in Africa. For the most part, these creatures lead a solitary lifestyle. They move somewhere among the grass and leave tunnel-like passages behind them. This bushbuck was standing near the shore, peacefully drinking the water, nothing foretold any trouble, but all of a sudden it was attacked by a crocodile. Did you see it? I mean, did you see exactly with what reaction the animal jumped away from the attack of the crocodile? I don't know about you, but I've never seen anything like this before in my life. It's just some kind of perfect reaction. It's also funny how the crocodile then crawled back into the water and looked at the bushbuck. It was like it was saying to itself, you clever little prankster, I remembered you. As you may have guessed by now, this video will be a correction of the situation on the part of the crocodile. This time it decided to sneak up and attack another, larger inhabitant of those places, the warthog. Yeah, yeah, I thought our predator was going to make it now too, but the outcome turned out to be completely different. Even the warthog dodged the attack superbly and immediately ran away leaving the crocodile with nothing. It's kind of weird, isn't it? It seems like a perfect trap without the slightest chance for the prey. But it turns out that all animals have impeccable reaction and can evade attacks. Another fan of nature got out to a South African nature reserve and happened to witness a real reptile drama. In front of his eyes, two small and nimble monitor lizards were engaged in a very cunning and at the same time complex plan to lure a crocodile from the place where it had hidden its eggs. The hungry brothers smelled an easy prey and, by smell, came to the female crocodile, which had hidden its hatchlings under the ground. The female crocodile tried to drive the crocodiles away for some time, but in the end the lizards prevailed in the confrontation and, waiting for the formidable mother to leave the clutch, ravaged its nest. And now I'll show you the result of a real Santa Barbara that took place in Australia. According to the locals, a crocodile named Nick had been courting a female named Bruce for a long time. He gave his all, constantly sharing food with her, and loved spending time together. But one day his hopes for a happy future were dashed. Nick saw his girlfriend cheating on him. This left an indelible mark on his soul and he came up with nothing better than revenge. Revenge on a congener male was strange, since he didn't know that Bruce had a soulmate. The lady, on the other hand, might have turned down the new partner that had offered all of itself. In short, Nick waited for the right moment, swam up to Bruce from behind and pounced on her as if she were not a congener crocodile but some delicious impala or something like that. Luckily for everyone, Bruce wasn't hurt but only frightened. 
The authors of the video didn't tell about the further relationship between the crocodiles. Do you think Nick did the right thing? Write in the comments. The Exciting Life of Bats Have you ever wondered where and how bats live? Turns out that they live in forests and exist in large colonies of more than 10,000 individuals. Every day, bats fly and go about their daily routine, and then they return to their starting point and hang from the branches head down. This is an ideal method for them in which they rest and recuperate. Once their sleep's complete, it's time to replenish their body's water supply, and to do this, bats fly right over the water. They wet their bellies and return home where they can drink in peace. Thousands of bats perform such stunts every day, but not all of them return. Somewhere in the water, a dangerous and hungry crocodile may be hiding at any moment. The predator is always on the lookout, is vigilant and ready to strike at any second. Sometimes bats manage to evade its attack, but sometimes they become its prey. And if you consider that there can be several predators in one place at once, everything becomes even more dangerous for the flying inhabitants of the forest. Battle of the Teeth Everyone knows that the crocodile has huge teeth, which are also very numerous. Lions can't boast such a wide mouth, but they don't need to. They are the perfect representation of teamwork in which each member of the pride plays a specific role. They are like a single hunting mechanism that is always functioning and forever bearing fruit. With these thoughts in mind, the lions in the following video decided to try their luck at hunting another dangerous animal. They coveted a hardy crocodile body, but didn't take into account the fact that the crocodile wouldn't run away. It understood that in one-on-one -on -one battle, it would most likely be the winner. Therefore, the crocodile chose the tactics of attacking someone certain. Then it quickly oriented itself and realized that it wouldn't work that way, so it found a safer place from which it could comfortably work on all three fronts. With this plan in mind, the crocodile defended itself long enough to wear down the lions and let them know that crocodiles don't just give up. In the end, the predators parted peacefully, having only annoyed each other. Jaguar versus Caiman Caimans belong to the Alligatoridae family. Depending on the species, they can be from 3 to 16 feet long. Nevertheless, this doesn't prevent the jaguar from conducting skillful attacks and catching even such difficult prey for dinner. The jaguar, according to the laws of the best hunters, chose the tactics of stealthy and quick-as-a-bullet attack. It tracked down the caiman swimming in the river for a long time and thought about when and where it would be better for it to attack the reptile. Waiting for the right opportunity, the wildcat held its breath remembered all the essentials and, like an assassin, took a leap of faith. Landing on the alligator, the jaguar stunned it, and those few seconds of disorientation were more than enough to deliver a series of punches combined with grabs and sink its teeth into the caiman's neck. By sinking its fangs there, the jaguar secured itself against the equally sharp teeth of its adversary, and even despite its prey's attempts to fight back, the big cat was in a winning position. It methodically dragged the caiman to the shore and dealt with it on land. <laughs> That's all, guys. Which attack scared you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.